Removing and Replacing Parts HP ZBook Fury 16 G9 Mobile Workstation PC How to Replace the Service Door Removal Slide the service door latch to the release position identified with a service cover icon. Important. If a security screw is installed, it must be removed before you can proceed. Break the sticker, if applicable. And slide the service door toward the front of the mobile workstation. Lift the service door off of the base enclosure and remove. Replacement Align the service door with the base enclosure and lower it into position. Slide the service door toward the rear of the mobile workstation until it is secure and the service door latch clicks. Important: If a security screw was installed, it must be replaced before proceeding. Slide the service door latch to the locked position. How to replace the battery. Before you begin, remove the service door. Warning, to avoid personal injury and damage to the product, use extreme care not to puncture, twist, or crack the battery. An internal puncture or rupture to the battery has the potential to cause a short, which may result in a thermal event. Removal. Peel back the plastic pull tab from the adhesive on the plastic shield on the wireless WAN module. Pull the plastic tab on the battery connector to disconnect the battery connector from the system board. Loosen the 5P1 Phillips head captive screws that secure the battery to the base enclosure. Lift the battery up and remove. Replacement Tow the clips into the cutouts and place the battery in position on the base enclosure. Tighten the 5P1 Phillips head captive screws that secure the battery to the base enclosure. Position the cable connector on the battery connector so that the metal clips on the cable connector fit over the clips on the battery connector. Gently push down on the cable connector to connect it to the battery connector on the system board. Smooth over the plastic pull tab to adhere it to the adhesive on the plastic shield on the wireless WAN module. How to replace the wireless LAN module? Before you begin, Remove the service door and disconnect the battery. Removal Remove the transparent plastic shield that covers the wireless LAN module. Caution. Use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade the product's performance. Carefully disconnect the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module by grasping the connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers. Remove the wireless LAN antennas from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the system board, allowing the module to release to the spring tension position. Grasp the wireless LAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Replacement. Align the notch in the wireless LAN module with the key in the wireless LAN module slot on the system board. Gently insert the wireless LAN module into the slot on the system board. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the base enclosure. Caution. 
Use care when connecting the wireless LAN antenna cables to the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade the product's performance. Route the wireless LAN antennas through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Carefully connect the wireless LAN antenna cables to the wireless LAN module. Replace the transparent plastic shield that covers the wireless LAN module. How to replace the wireless WAN module. Before you begin, remove the service door and disconnect the battery. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the wireless WAN module bracket to the base enclosure. Remove the wireless WAN module bracket with the thermal pad from the alignment pins on the base enclosure. Remove the transparent plastic shield that covers the wireless WAN connectors on the wireless WAN module. Caution. Use care when disconnecting the wireless WAN antenna cables from the wireless WAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade the product's performance. Carefully disconnect the wireless WAN antenna cables from the wireless WAN module by grasping the connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers. Remove the wireless WAN antennas from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless WAN module to the system board, allowing the module to release to the spring tension position. Grasp the wireless WAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Replacement Align the notch in the wireless WAN module with the key in the wireless WAN module slot on the system board. Gently insert the wireless WAN module into the slot on the system board. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless WAN module to the system board. Caution. Use care when connecting the wireless WAN antenna cables to the wireless WAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade the mobile workstation's performance. Route the wireless WAN antennas through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Carefully connect the wireless WAN antenna cables to the wireless WAN module. Replace the transparent plastic shield that covers the wireless WAN connectors on the wireless WAN module. Place the wireless WAN module bracket with the thermal pad on the alignment pins in the base enclosure. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the wireless WAN module bracket to the base enclosure. How to replace the wireless WAN antenna, top cover. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, and wireless WAN module. Removal. Remove the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Carefully peel back the foil on the wireless WAN antenna from the adhesive that secures it to the base enclosure. 
Lift the wireless WAN antenna from the base enclosure and remove. Replacement Position the wireless WAN antenna on the base enclosure. Smooth over the foil to secure the wireless WAN antenna to the base enclosure. Route the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 through the routing channel on the base enclosure. How to replace the left speaker. Before you begin, remove the service door and battery. Removal. Carefully peel back the wireless WAN antenna from the base enclosure. Lift the wireless WAN antenna off of the base enclosure. Disconnect the left speaker cable from the connector on the system board. Remove the left speaker cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the two P000 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the left speaker to the base enclosure. Remove the left speaker. Replacement. Place the left speaker onto the alignment posts on the base enclosure. Replace the two P000 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the left speaker to the base enclosure. Route the left speaker cable through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Connect the left speaker cable to the connector on the system board. Place the wireless WAN antenna into position on the base enclosure. Carefully smooth over the wireless WAN antenna to adhere it to the base enclosure. How to replace the right speaker. Before you begin, remove the service door and disconnect the battery. Removal. Disconnect the right speaker cable from the connector on the system board. Remove the right speaker cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the two P000 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the right speaker to the base enclosure. Remove the right speaker. Replacement. Place the right speaker onto the alignment posts on the base enclosure. Replace the two P000 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the right speaker to the base enclosure. Route the right speaker cable through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Connect the right speaker cable to the connector on the system board. How to replace the M.2 solid state drives. Before you begin, remove the base enclosure and battery. Removal. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the copper bracket to the base enclosure. Remove the copper bracket and thermal pad from the base enclosure. Pull the two pull tabs on the sides of the solid-state drive shield 
to separate the M.2 solid-state drive shield from its retention clips on the system board and remove. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the first M.2 solid-state drive to the system board, allowing the M.2 solid-state drive to release to the spring tension position. Grasp the first M.2 solid-state drive by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the second M.2 solid-state drive and bracket to the system board. Open the M.2 solid-state drive bracket, allowing the M.2 solid-state drive to release to the spring tension position. Grasp the second M.2 solid-state drive by the edges and pull gently to remove it. The third and fourth M.2 solid-state drives, if installed, are removed in the same manner. Replacement Important! The mobile workstation supports up to four SSD slots, which should be populated in a specific order. SSD2, SSD1, SSD4, SSD3. When replacing the SSDs, you should note the correct order indicated on the system board and on the M.2 solid state drive shield that covers the SSDs. Align the notch in the second M.2 solid state drive with the key in the M.2 solid state drive slot on the system board. Gently insert the M.2 solid state drive into its slot on the system board. Push the M.2 solid state drive down and close the M.2 solid state drive bracket until the bracket clicks into place. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the M.2 solid state drive and bracket to the system board. Align the notch in the first M.2 solid state drive with the key in the M.2 solid state drive slot on the system board. Gently insert the first M.2 solid state drive into its slot on the system board. Push the M.2 solid state drive down and replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the first M.2 solid state drive to the system board. Note. If you are replacing the M.2 solid state drive shield, be sure to first remove the releasing paper that covers the thermal pads before installing it. The thermal pads for the M.2 solid state drive shield are reusable. If the thermal pads are split, torn, or damaged, order the thermal pad kit and replace any thermal pads that are unfit for reuse. Place the M.2 solid state drive shield into position straight down over the retention clips on the system board and press down along the edges to secure it to the system board. Position the copper bracket with thermal pad over the alignment pins on the base enclosure. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the copper bracket to the base enclosure. How to replace the memory modules. Before you begin, Remove the base enclosure and battery. Removal. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the copper bracket to the base enclosure. Remove the copper bracket from the base enclosure. Peel back the black mylar that secures the memory shield to the base enclosure. Pull the two pull tabs on the memory shield to separate the memory shield from its retention clips on the system board and remove. Push both arms outward simultaneously to release the memory module to the spring tension position. 
Grasp the memory module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Additional memory modules, if installed, are removed in the same manner. Replacement Important The mobile workstation supports up to four DIMMs, which should be populated in a specific order. DIMM 1 DIMM 3 DIMM 4 DIMM 2 When replacing the DIMMs, you should note the correct order indicated on the system board and on the memory shield that covers the DIMMs. Align the notch in the memory module with the key in the memory module slot on the system board. At an angle, gently insert the memory module into its slot on the system board. Press the memory module down to latch the arms. Additional memory modules, if installed, are replaced in the same manner. Note, if you are replacing the memory shield, be sure to first remove the releasing paper that covers the thermal pads before installing it. The thermal pads for the memory shield are reusable. If the thermal pads are split, torn, or damaged, order the thermal pad kit and replace any thermal pads that are unfit for reuse. Place the memory shield into position straight down over the retention clips on the system board and press down along the edges to secure it to the system board. Smooth over the black mylar that secures the memory shield to the base enclosure. Position the copper bracket over the alignment pins on the base enclosure. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the copper bracket to the base enclosure. How to replace the base enclosure. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, wireless WAN antenna top cover, M.2 solid state drives, and memory modules. Removal. Disconnect the right speaker cable from the connector on the system board. Remove the right speaker cable from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the wireless LAN antennas from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Remove the wireless WAN antennas from the routing channel on the base enclosure. Loosen the three T5 Torx head captive screws that secure the base enclosure to the top cover. Remove the following screws that secure the base enclosure to the top cover. Five P000 Phillips broadhead screws at the front of the mobile workstation. Two long P1 Phillips head screws that secure the keyboard to the top cover. Thirteen short P1 Phillips head screws at the left, front, and right sides of the mobile workstation. Carefully separate the edges of the base enclosure from the top cover. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the small metal component to the base enclosure. Carefully remove the small metal component for the switch from the base enclosure by grasping the component with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers and keep it aside for later replacement. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RJ45 drop jaw connector to the base enclosure.
Remove the RJ45 drop jaw connector and keep it aside for later replacement. Remove the base enclosure. Replacement. Position the RJ45 drop jaw connector on the base enclosure. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RJ45 drop jaw connector to the base enclosure. Place the small metal component into position on the base enclosure. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the small metal component to the base enclosure. Place the base enclosure in position on the top cover, making sure not to trap the wireless WAN antennas under the base enclosure. Carefully press down on the edges of the base enclosure to secure it to the top cover. Replace the following screws that secure the base enclosure to the top cover. 5 P000 Phillips broadhead screws at the front of the mobile workstation. 2 long P1 Phillips head screws that secure the keyboard to the top cover. Thirteen short P1 Phillips head screws at the left, front, and right sides of the workstation. Tighten the three T5 Torx head captive screws that secure the base enclosure to the top cover. Route the wireless WAN antenna cables through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Route the wireless LAN antenna cables through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Route the right speaker cable through the routing channel on the base enclosure. Connect the right speaker cable to the connector on the system board. How to replace the system fans. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, and base enclosure. Removal. Disconnect the display panel cable from the connector on the system board. Remove the display panel cable from the routing channel over the left system fan. Remove the three wireless WAN cables from the routing channel over the left system fan. Disconnect the left system fan cable from the connector on the system board. Loosen the P1 Phillips head captive screw that secures the left system fan to the system board. Lift the left system fan off of the system board and remove. Disconnect the webcam cable from the connector on the system board. Remove the webcam cable from the routing channel over the right system fan. Remove the wireless LAN cables from the routing channel over the right system fan. Disconnect the right system fan cable from the connector on the system board. Loosen the P1 Phillips head captive screw 
that secures the right system fan to the system board. Lift the right system fan off of the system board and remove. Replacement Place the right system fan into position over the screw well on the system board. Tighten the P1 Phillips head captive screw that secures the right system fan to the system board. Connect the right system fan cable to the connector on the system board. Route the wireless LAN cables along the routing channel over the right system fan. Route the webcam cable along the routing channel over the right system fan. Connect the webcam cable to the connector on the system board. Place the left system fan into position over the screw well on the system board. Tighten the P1 Phillips head captive screw that secures the left system fan to the system board. Reconnect the left system fan cable to the connector on the system board. Route the three wireless WAN cables along the routing channel over the left system fan. Route the display panel cable along the routing channel over the left system fan. Connect the display panel cable to the connector on the system board. How to replace the heatsink. Before you begin, remove the service door battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, and system fans. Removal. In the numerical order indicated, loosen the eight P1 Phillips head captive screws that secure the heatsink to the system board. Note, due to the adhesive quality of the thermal grease located between the heat sink and processor components, it may be necessary to wiggle the heat sink slightly from side to side to detach it from the system board. Lift the heat sink off of the system board and remove. Replacement. Note, before replacing the heat sink, the thermal grease should be replaced. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the heatsink is removed. Use alcohol in a soft cloth or an alcohol swab to clean all thermal grease off of the heatsink and processor components. Use the thermal grease applicator to apply thermal grease to the processor components. Place the heat sink into position over the screw wells on the system board. In the numerical order indicated, tighten the eight P1 Phillips head captive screws that secure the heat sink to the system board.
How to Replace the Graphics Card Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, right system fan, and heatsink. Removal Remove the four short P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the system board. Remove the three long P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the beam connector and system board. Lift the graphics card off of the alignment pins on the system board and remove. Replacement Important! The beam connector should be replaced every time the graphics card is replaced. Every graphics card spare will include a new beam connector, which is shipped in a tray with a removal tool. Place the graphics card on the alignment pins on the system board. Replace the three long P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the beam connector and system board. Replace the four short P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the system board. How to replace the beam connector. Before you begin, remove the service door Battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, right system fan, heat sink, and graphics card. Removal. Remove and dispose of the old beam connector. Replacement. Important. The beam connector should be replaced every time the system board or graphics card is replaced. Every system board and graphics card spare will include a new beam connector, which is shipped in a tray with a removal tool. Grasp the handle and remove the beam connector removal tool from its tray. Important! Only use the beam connector removal tool to handle the beam connector. Place the beam connector on the alignment pins on the system board. While pressing the release tabs, remove the tool from the beam connector on the system board. How to replace the display panel assembly top cover with keyboard. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, and heatsink. Removal. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the left hinge to the top cover. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the right hinge to the top cover. Open the hinges. Grasp the front of the top cover and rotate it away from the display panel assembly approximately 135 degrees. Slide the top cover out from underneath the hinges and remove the top cover. Replacement Important! When installing a new top cover, remove all of the components attached to the old top cover and install them on the new top cover. Carefully guide the top cover into position underneath the hinges. Close the hinges. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the right hinge to the top cover. 
replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the left hinge to the top cover. How to replace the system board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, and display panel assembly. Removal. Important. Make careful note of the routing of all cables connected to the system board for later replacement. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the graphics extender bracket to the top cover. Remove the graphics extender bracket. Disconnect the following cables from the system board. Left speaker cable. SD card reader ribbon cable, hub board ribbon cable, smart card reader board ribbon cable, audio jack ribbon cable. Remove the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the system board to the top cover. Remove the five P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system board to the top cover. Grasping the system board near the center, carefully lift the right edge off of the alignment pins and slide the external connectors on the left side out of the cutouts in the top cover. Remove the system board. Peel away the adhesive foam that covers the RTC battery cable. Disconnect the RTC battery cable from its connector on the system board. Loosen the RTC battery from the adhesive that secures it to the system board. Remove the RTC battery. Replacement. Place the RTC battery in position on the system board. Press down on the RTC battery to adhere it to the system board. Reconnect the RTC battery cable to its connector on the system board. Smooth over the adhesive foam that covers the RTC battery cable. Note, before installing a system board, remove all the components from the old system board and install them on the new system board. Important, the beam connector should be replaced every time the system board is replaced. Every system board spare will include a new beam connector, which is shipped in a tray with a removal tool. Carefully tow the external connectors on the system board into the cutouts in the top cover. Lower the system board into position on the top cover. Caution! Take care not to trap any of the cables between the system board and top cover. Replace the five P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system board to the top cover. Replace the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the system board to the top cover. Reconnect the following cables to their connectors on the system board. Left speaker cable. SD card reader ribbon cable. Hub board ribbon cable. Smart card reader board ribbon cable. Audio jack ribbon cable. Place the graphics extender bracket in position on the system board. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw 
that secures the graphics extender bracket to the top cover. Important! After a system board replacement, be sure to complete post-installation tasks as required that may include verifying functionality of the mobile workstation, updating the BIOS, updating DMI and other settings, How to replace the fingerprint reader. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Remove the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the fingerprint reader bracket to the top cover. Remove the fingerprint reader bracket from its alignment pin on the top cover and remove. Carefully separate the fingerprint reader from the adhesive that secures it to the top cover. Lift the locking bar up on the fingerprint reader ZIF connector and disconnect the fingerprint reader ribbon cable from the fingerprint reader. Remove the fingerprint reader. Replacement. Insert the fingerprint reader ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the fingerprint reader and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Place the fingerprint reader into position on the top cover. Press down on the fingerprint reader to adhere it to the top cover. Place the fingerprint reader bracket onto its alignment pin on the top cover. Replace the P1 Phillips broadhead screw that secures the fingerprint reader bracket to the top cover. How to replace the smart card reader board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Carefully remove the smart card reader board ribbon cable from the adhesive that adheres it to the smart card reader board. Lift the locking bar up on the smart card reader ZIF connector and disconnect the smart card reader ribbon cable from the smart card reader. Remove the three P1 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the smart card reader board to the top cover. Remove the smart card reader board from its screw wells on the top cover and remove. Replacement. Place the smart card reader board over the screw wells on the top cover. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the smart card reader board to the top cover. Insert the smart card reader board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the smart card reader board. And press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Smooth over the smart card reader board ribbon cable to adhere it to the smart card reader board. How to replace the NFC board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, 
wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Lift the locking bar up on the NFC ZIF connector and disconnect the NFC ribbon cable from the NFC board. Peel back the transparent tape that covers the NFC antenna ZIF connector. Lift the locking bar up on the NFC antenna ZIF connector and disconnect the NFC antenna ribbon cable from the NFC board. Carefully remove the NFC board from the adhesive that adheres it to the top cover. Remove the NFC board. Replacement. Place the NFC board in position on the top cover. Press down on the NFC board to adhere it to the top cover. Insert the NFC antenna ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the NFC board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Smooth over the transparent tape that covers the NFC antenna ZIF connector. Insert the NFC ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the NFC board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to replace the SD card reader board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Remove the SD card reader tray and set it aside for later replacement. Remove the three P000 Phillips head screws that secure the SD card reader board to the top cover. Remove the SD card reader board from its alignment posts on the top cover and remove. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the SD card reader board ZIF connector and disconnect the SD card reader board ribbon cable from the SD card reader board. Remove the SD card reader board. Replacement. Insert the SD card reader board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the SD card reader board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Place the SD card reader board onto its alignment pins on the top cover. Replace the three P000 Phillips head screws that secure the SD card reader board to the top cover. Replace the SD card reader tray. How to replace the keyboard hub board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Using minimal force, 
lift the locking bar up on the system board ZIF connector and disconnect the hub board ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the NFC board ZIF connector and disconnect the NFC board ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the touchpad ZIF connector and disconnect the touchpad ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the keyboard backlight ZIF connector and disconnect the keyboard backlight ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the keyboard ZIF connector and disconnect the keyboard ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the fingerprint reader ZIF connector and disconnect the fingerprint reader ribbon cable from the keyboard hub board. Carefully loosen the keyboard hub board from the adhesive that secures it to the top cover. Remove the keyboard hub board. Replacement Place the keyboard hub board in its position on the top cover. Press down on the keyboard hub board to adhere it to the top cover. Insert the fingerprint reader ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Insert the keyboard ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the keyboard backlight ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the touchpad ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the NFC board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the system board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the keyboard hub board and press the locking bar down. How to replace the touchpad with NFC antenna. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Peel back the transparent tape that covers the NFC antenna ZIF connector. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the NFC antenna ZIF connector and disconnect the NFC antenna ribbon cable from the NFC board. Lift the locking bar up on the keyboard hub board ZIF connector and disconnect the keyboard hub ribbon cable from the touchpad. Remove the 8P000 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad to the top cover. Lift the front edge of the touchpad and slide it out of its cutout on the top cover and remove. Replacement Slide the touchpad into its cutout on the top cover. Replace the 8P1 Phillips head screws that secure the touchpad to the top cover. Insert the keyboard hub board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the touchpad and press the locking bar down.
Insert the NFC antenna ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the touchpad and press the locking bar down. How to replace the audio jack. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, left speaker, right speaker, M.2 solid state drives, memory modules, base enclosure, system fans, heatsink, graphics card, beam connector, display panel assembly, and system board. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the audio jack to the top cover. Lift the audio jack out of the top cover and remove. Replacement. Tow the audio jack into its cutout on the top cover. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the audio jack to the top cover. How to replace the hinge cap. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, and display panel assembly. Removal. Carefully squeeze the hinge cap to disengage the retention clips from the display enclosure. Lift the hinge cap off of the hinges and remove. Replacement. Place the hinge cap into the retention tabs on the display enclosure. Carefully apply pressure to the hinge cap to engage the retention clips to the display enclosure. How to replace the display bezel. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, and hinge cap. Removal. Important. Take care when releasing the sides of the display bezel. It is very thin and can be easily damaged. Using your fingers or a non-metallic flat bladed tool. Carefully release the top, sides, and bottom edges of the display bezel from the adhesive and retention tabs that secure it to the display enclosure. Remove the display bezel. Replacement. Place the display bezel into position over the alignment pin on the display enclosure. Carefully apply pressure along the edges of the display bezel to secure it to the display enclosure. How to replace the hinges. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, 
system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, and display bezel. Removal. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the right hinge to the display enclosure. Lift the right hinge off of the alignment pins on the display enclosure and remove. The left hinge is removed in the same manner. Replacement Place the right hinge onto its alignment pins on the display enclosure. Replace the three P1 Phillips broadhead screws that secure the right hinge to the display enclosure. The left hinge is replaced in the same manner. How to replace the display panel. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, and display bezel. Removal. Note. Tabs for the stretch release tape on the display panel are accessible at the top and bottom edges of the display panel. Grab the tab of the left stretch release tape at the top of the panel. Carefully pull the left stretch release tape from the top of the panel as horizontally as possible until the tape clears the display panel assembly. Caution! If you break the tape, it would be very difficult to remove the panel. The right stretch release tape is removed in the same manner. Lift the display panel at an angle to access the display panel cable. Peel back the transparent tape that secures the display panel cable to the display panel. Lift the locking bar up and disconnect the display panel cable from the display panel. Remove the display panel cable. Replacement. Connect the display panel cable to the display panel. And press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Smooth over the transparent tape that secures the display panel cable to the display panel. Place new strips of stretch release tape on the locations marked on the display enclosure. Note, refer to the service guide for the position of the stretch release tape. Position the display panel over its alignment pins on the display enclosure. Press down gently along the edges of the display panel to attach the adhesive strips and clips to the display enclosure. How to replace the display panel cable. 
Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heatsink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Peel back the transparent tape that secures the display panel cable to the display panel. Lift the locking bar up and disconnect the display panel cable from the display panel. Remove the display panel cable. Replacement. Connect the display panel cable to the display panel. And press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Smooth over the transparent tape that secures the display panel cable to the display panel. How to replace the webcam. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam ribbon cable from the webcam. Using a non-metallic flat bladed tool, carefully lift the webcam from the adhesive and alignment pins that secure it to the display enclosure. Remove the webcam. Replacement. Place the webcam onto its alignment pins on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to the webcam to adhere it to the display enclosure. Insert the webcam ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the webcam and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to replace the ALS board. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the ALS board ZIF connector and disconnect the ALS board ribbon cable from the ALS board. Remove the two P000 Phillips head screws that secure the ALS board to the display enclosure. Using a non-metallic flat bladed tool, carefully lift the ALS board from the adhesive and alignment pins that secure it to the display enclosure. Remove the ALS board. Replacement. Place the ALS board onto its alignment pins on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to the ALS board to adhere it to the display enclosure. Replace the two P000 Phillips head screws that secure the ALS board to the display enclosure. Insert the ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the ALS board. And press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place.
How to Replace the G-Sensor Board Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the G-Sensor Board ZIF connector and disconnect the G-Sensor Board ribbon cable from the G-Sensor Board. Using a non-metallic flat-bladed tool, carefully lift the G-Sensor Board from the adhesive and alignment pins that secure it to the display enclosure. Remove the G-Sensor Board. Replacement Place the G-Sensor Board into position on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to the G-Sensor Board to adhere it to the display enclosure. Insert the ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the G-Sensor Board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to Replace the Display Hub Board Before you begin, Remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam board ribbon cable from the display hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the ALS board ZIF connector and disconnect the ALS board ribbon cable from the display hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the G sensor board ZIF connector and disconnect the G sensor board ribbon cable from the display hub board. Lift the locking bar up on the webcam cable ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam cable from the display hub board. Using a non-metallic flat-bladed tool, carefully lift the display hub board from the adhesive that secure it to the display enclosure. Remove the display hub board. Replacement. Place the display hub board into position on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to the display hub board to adhere it to the display enclosure. Insert the webcam cable into its ZIF connector on the display hub board and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. Insert the G-Sensor Board ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the display hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the ALS sensor ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the display hub board and press the locking bar down. Insert the webcam ribbon cable into its ZIF connector on the display hub board and press the locking bar down. How to replace the webcam cable. Before you begin, remove the service door battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Important. Make careful note of the routing of the webcam cable for later replacement. Using minimal force, lift the locking bar up on the webcam ZIF connector and disconnect the webcam cable from the display board hub. Carefully remove the webcam cable from the adhesive and routing channel on the display enclosure. Remove the webcam cable. Replacement. 
place the webcam cable between the alignment markings on the display enclosure. Press down along the webcam cable to reattach it to the adhesive on the display enclosure. Connect the webcam cable to the display board hub and press the locking bar down to lock the cable into place. How to replace the wireless LAN antennas. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Important. Make careful note of the routing of the wireless LAN antenna cables for later replacement. Peel away the adhesive that secures the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 to the wireless LAN antenna cables and separate the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 from the wireless LAN antenna cables. Carefully peel back the two pieces of fabric adhesive that secure the wireless LAN antenna cables to the display enclosure. Remove the wireless LAN antenna cables from the routing channel on the display enclosure. Carefully peel back the metallic tape that secures the wireless LAN antenna transceiver to the display enclosure. Using a non-conductive flat-bladed tool, Remove the wireless LAN antenna transceiver from the display enclosure. Remove the wireless LAN antennas. Replacement. Caution. Use care when handling and installing the new antennas. Accidental bending of the antenna elements will detune the antennas and degrade product performance. Slide the wireless LAN antenna transceiver into position on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to adhere the wireless LAN antenna transceiver to the display enclosure. Route the wireless LAN antenna cables along the routing channel on the display enclosure. Smooth over the two pieces of fabric adhesive tape that secure the wireless LAN antenna cables to the display enclosure. Smooth over the adhesive that secures the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 to the wireless LAN antenna cables. How to replace the wireless WAN antennas. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, and display panel. Removal. Important. Make careful note of the routing of the wireless WAN antenna cables for later replacement. Peel away the adhesive that secures the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 to the wireless LAN antenna cables and separate the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 from the wireless LAN antenna cables. Carefully peel back the two pieces of fabric adhesive 
that secure the wireless WAN antenna cables to the display enclosure. Remove the wireless WAN antenna cables from the routing channel on the display enclosure. Carefully peel back the metallic tape that secures the wireless WAN antenna transceiver to the display enclosure. Using a non-conductive flat-bladed tool, remove the wireless WAN antenna transceiver from the display enclosure. Remove the wireless WAN antennas. Replacement Caution! Use care when handling and installing the new antennas. Accidental bending of the antenna elements will detune the antennas and degrade product performance. Slide the wireless WAN antenna transceiver into position on the display enclosure. Gently apply pressure to adhere the wireless WAN antenna transceiver to the display enclosure. Route the wireless WAN antenna cables along the routing channel on the display enclosure. Smooth over the two pieces of fabric adhesive tape that secure the wireless WAN antenna cables to the display enclosure. Smooth over the adhesive that secures the wireless WAN antenna cable labeled 7 to the wireless LAN antenna cables. How to replace the display enclosure. Before you begin, remove the service door, battery, wireless LAN module, wireless WAN module, base enclosure, system fans, heat sink, display panel assembly, hinge cap, display bezel, display panel, G sensor board, display hub board, ALS board, webcam, webcam cable, wireless LAN antennas, wireless WAN antennas, and hinges. Removal. Remove the display enclosure. Replacement. Replace the display enclosure. Click the Playlists tab in YouTube to find HP videos in other languages. And search our channel to find official HP support videos.